So I had planned on doing a sort of, I guess, maybe a vlog or like a day of my life on being the farm, on the farm, what I do day to day. But it kind of turned into something else because um, a very sad situation happened on the way to work. So let me just back up. Um, I was, my day at work starts at 11, but today it started a little later because I was picking up propane for my bosses. So I go to the propane place at 11 to use company time, which that's what they told me to do. Um, so I was driving to work um, around 11.30 and then it takes me 20 to 25 minutes to actually get to work. So it was probably 12-ish by the time I got to the area of my work. I was driving, listening to Elton John, and I was felt like a really good day, felt like I was gonna get a lot done. I was excited to film this video. And then all of a sudden I see a little baby deer in the road, not quite in the road, but there's not really a shoulder on the roads to get to my work. Um, it's more of a ditch and it's really twiggy. Um, so the deer was kind of in that. It was alive, and but it wasn't able to get up because it's what I thought was its back legs are broken. Um, so I was kind of stopped there for a little bit. I was trying to quickly Google like maybe a wildlife or like animal services, something like that. But um, my internet isn't very good there. So then I called my boyfriend to see if he could look something up for me, look up a number for me, but he was um, on the road so it wouldn't happen as quick. So then I called my boss to see if she was still on the property because she was leaving for the day to go on her vacation. Um, luckily, she was still there and still available, so she called um, a wildlife service number that she knew, and then they called me, and unfortunately, since I work in San Bernardino County, the number that, or the services was for Monterey County, so they couldn't come pick up the animal because it wasn't in their jurisdiction, so then they gave me that's just a door. <laughs> um, so they gave me a number for the California Wildlife and Game, whatever number that is. I called them, told them exactly where the deer was, and then they said that they would call someone out there. Um, I really did not want to leave the deer there because people were still driving really fast and they were getting pretty close to the deer and uh, one of them almost hit them hit the deer so I was just like I don't want the deer to get hit and not die and uh, no, that sounds terrible not die and then it suffer even more and oh I feel really terrible because the neighbor there was a neighbor and he came out and he was like, oh, I would have just, you know, ended the deer's life because its back is broken, not its legs. Because um, I guess if a leg is broken, they'll still try and get up. But if the back is broken, they can't move at all. And I also noticed that like the tail wasn't moving at all, which kind of is another identifier for the back being broken. So like they can't really do anything um, once a back is broken or they don't have the resources to do it. So he said he was on his way down there to end the deer's life. But since I had called, um, if he did anything after that, then it would have been illegal and he could have got in a lot of trouble. So I felt really bad that I had done that, had called because he couldn't intervene and like, I guess put the deer out of its mercy. Um, luckily, um, there was a lady who had pulled over and she was trying to get a hold of someone too. Um, and she was kind of blocking the road. So 
people were also calling the sheriff and because of that the um because she was walking the road it was like a hazard in the road so that like got it was a hazard in the road because of the car and it was a hazard in the road because of the deer and because the deer was suffering so that made them act quicker um the neighbor was telling me that they had left a deer there for 12 hours and not only is that sad because the deer is suffering for all that well, all that time but it also brings down a mountain lion that is in the aromas area and he said that the once the mountain lion comes down and starts um killing your little animals and his cat was actually killed by that mountain lion because it had come for the deer and then it saw a cat in their yard and so it's not good to first of all it's like so sad and unethical to leave an animal suffering in the road it's also a hazard because someone could hit the deer and um they can uh their car could spin out and like cause more damage to the deer to the car and it's just really unsafe and then you're bringing down other animals to feed on that animal and then you're putting your children your small children and really anyone i mean a mountain lion could kill anyone really um at risk so yeah um i'm like, like i was not expecting to have to deal with this um today and it's a little sad well i was more upset earlier like i had a good cry i felt kind of bad because I cried and I I cried in front of my boss and she felt really bad and she was just trying to go to vacation and I'm over here crying and I felt really bad but it's like it's something that's like a part of like living in an area like this or working in an area like this or working on a farm that like for me I don't know if I'll ever get used to it maybe I will be more I don't know I guess desensitized to it but it's really sad and really tough having to deal with hurt animals and stuff like that um it's pretty upsetting because people drive so fast on the road even when i was there um with other people uh people were driving really fast and it's one dangerous for animals who are crossing um two dangerous for other drivers three dangerous for other people walking their dogs along that road people like to walk their dogs people like to run and exercise um and you could hit a person uh people go like 50 or 60 miles on the road and it's not smooth it's um there's a lot of turns there's a lot of up and down um so it's kind of like what the heck they need to get the speed limit lowered it should be like maximum 35 it's scary and it's like, um, it, I mean, pe deer's animals are going to be hit on the road, but they said that that was the third one that month, this month. Um, I don't think if the speed limit was lower, it would have been three this month. It Maybe it wouldn't have even been any. So I kind of want to look into that and maybe get involved in trying to lower the speed limit and get people more I mean the this it's kind of like you're preaching to the choir though because the people that live around here don't speed because they see the deer they see the animals and they like they know the road isn't uh all that safe because they drive it every day it's the people that don't drive it every day who are using it to cut through because we have 101 on one side and then we have like um I think it's like 152 um intersecting through that so people to try to cut through traffic cut through the anzar road the coal road to get to 101 or wherever they're trying to get and it's people who don't drive it often they speed so i don't know i'm just i thought i would talk about it here to make it maybe other people aware of it um and also make myself feel better to like kind of get it off my chest um but it's it was really sad it's still sad but yeah <laughs> i'm sorry i'm just starting on such a negative note but i mean 
you have to talk about the sad things, the disturbing things for something happened, so. Um, but I have a list of things that I, I'm going to do today that are in my notes. I took a picture. Um, so today is Wednesday and I am alone on the farm today because my coworker doesn't work on Wednesdays. And then my two bosses are celebrating winter solstice um, and starting their like Christmassy vacation. Um, so I thought that this would be a good day for me to film because I'm still very shy with filming. No one's here. Um, I think that would just be easier. Um, and I'd probably have more to do because no one's here. So today I need to um, do chicken care. I need to check on some things that are propagating, um, check on the greenhouse, um, do some hillside cleaning. I started that on Monday and I'm about 25% of just one part of the hillside down. So, um, done, not down, whatever. Um, so I need to do that. Uh, let's see. I might get to mulching, um, field two, laying down mulch. Um, and I might get to weeding, depending on how everything else goes. Um, I'm also going to need to put away the chickens before I leave because my bosses aren't here. And I need to also feed the cats before I leave because um, they're not here. And there is a kitten who is running around and like she keeps following me around. But I think now she's like wants to be solo. I have to put her away in um, my boss's uh, living space. Uh, before dark just so she's safe uh, and yeah that is everything I'm gonna do I am starting it's 1 30 now I had a late start I um, because of the whole deer situation and because I was gathering uh, getting propane um, put the propane away so that's good and yeah I'm just gonna get to work now and I'm gonna bring you guys with me <laughs> Harriet is my favorite because she's the only one that lets me touch her and hold her. And every time I come uh, approaching the, the coop, she runs to me. Difficulties with closing this. There you go. I always have to make sure I close it because one day I left it open and then there were three chickens that got out and it was very difficult to get them back in. So... Check there. Okay, Harriet. Can I talk? So I checked Harriet's little house here for her poop because they poop in there. Um, I cleaned it out on Monday, so it's looking pretty clean still. I'll probably clean it on Monday when I get back uh, from the weekend. So I like to check if there's any eggs. No eggs. Um, yeah. Uh, their bedding is looking okay. I think I could change it though. Because there's a lot of poop in there. Now that I'm looking at it. So we're going to clean out the bedding. Um, I usually just grab a bucket and then shovel it out and then put a nice new layer. Um, so that's what I'll do. I'm going to get a shovel, but before I get the shovel, I'm going to go and go to the veggies and get some kale because I can hear Harriet yelling at me for some kale. There she is. She'll literally... And then there's Daphne! Daphne! Hi, Daphne! She wants to come, <laughs> she wants to come in so bad. Daphne! Maybe I'll let her in because she seems very interested with the chickens and she like, um, she's so tiny. So like, she's not going to attack them. And Harriet is pretty good about putting Daphne in her place. 
they play through the little gate right here. And um, Harriet pecks at her if she gets too wild, which is good. Play right there. <laughs> Come on, Daphne. I'm so happy that Daphne has her little um, jingle bell on her count on her collar because um this is a little tool shop to cut the kale because if not I would step on her more than I already do now so I'm gonna go in the greenhouse real quick just to I'll show you guys what it looks like later but um just to sanitize the cut the kale I'm really sorry if this is be like using my hand. Or <laughs> I'm using. This is our purple cauliflower. I love purple cauliflower. I think it's so pretty. I don't think I've ever tasted it. But so this is. I could either pick from this. Or I could pick from this. I think I'm gonna go to field two though because it looks. Looks a little greener and bigger, fuller. So some kale here. I'm gonna go over here. It's just the big ones. So usually, if I had two hands, just not let the kale drop. But since I don't have two hands, I'm gonna just. Let it fall and then pick it up later. Um, and I do one more just for good measure. Perfect. I'm gonna put that in the pumpkin. And then bring the other. Got my kale. Then we're gonna go surprise the little girls. Well, it's not little, but to me they're little. They love. They love kale so much. Let me get in there. This one saw the door was open. Try to escape. <laughs> These two, their feathers are looking really nice. They were like molting and they looked like they were in rough shape. But all of them look really, really like plump because of it. Except for Harriet. I don't know if you can see, but the back of her... Um, um, I guess her butt there's not that many feathers <laughs> right there I don't know why it kind of grosses me out to see it like that because it looks like it's blood but it's not blood it's just their like skin I keep hearing Daphne run around she's having a lot of fun I always make sure I have my gloves on when I'm doing anything with the chickens just I've only done this a few times. I just to show you something out. Doesn't go to waste. We put this in our um, compost. Hi, Harriet. Hi. Kind of gross, but 
I really try to get all the little poop, poop, poopies, the little things, um, to add to the compost because it's like liquid in my ankle. It's like, I've heard it's like gold because it's so good for compost and so good for plants. Uh, so, I really try to grab everything. So, I got a bucket and a half things out, and then I'm going to add in the new, that new, new. What are you doing, Josh? So, I just finished clearing out the bedding. Before I put this in the compost, I check their water and their food. So, here, they have a lot of food in here. Um, I just like to push it to the edges, like as much as I can, but that's enough food for them. Their water looks good. It's, there's a lot left in it and it's not too dirty. Then they also have a water and a little food thing in here that I check. Um, the food, I mean, as long as the food out here, out there is filled, it's fine. This water is looking a little dirty with a lot of the bedding, so I'm going to clean it out. I probably won't empty out all the water because as you can see, it's, there's a lot of water left. It's just that the outside is dirty, so I'm going to dump that water and give it a little scrub and then dump it out a little bit more, but the water that's in there will just go down, if that makes sense. Um, so that's all I'm going to do in the chicken coop. This is our compost. Um, my coworker, he turns it uh, once a week and then wets it too. Uh, I can make a video on composting. I've learned a few things from working here. And I also want to do more research about it because I really want to do compost. Um, some sort of compost bin where I live, um, especially for the spring and summer growing season, just don't get off fresh compost. Like, it can get pretty expensive purchasing it, and um, it's like so good for your garden. So, just dump that, and then try to make it <laughs> I don't want any boots in the house, so I really try to take advantage of using my feet rather than bending over and pushing it aside just because I'm lazy. <laughs> So yeah, now I'm done with chicken care and then, now I'm done with chicken care and I'm gonna move on to the greenhouse. So this is the greenhouse. We have some snapdragons that I started from seeds that were, um, actually from a potted plant that we have here. And then I have some random propagations. And then we have some seed starting things. This tray is looking a little happier than the other. We have broccoli, um, cauliflower, and eggplant. And then we have some little trees or I guess like tree-like plants that we need to plant. I might end up doing that today because I don't know how much time I'll have for the other things. We have this shrub tree thing that I saved. Um, it was like dying in our pollinator garden and I did not want to give up on it. So then I potted it up um, and then just gave it some more love and water and then I pruned it a lot and then honestly that pruning helped it so much because all of this green is new growth. It was literally just the stick in the middle and then a few other like branches and that was it. These are some tomatoes that were overwintering. I potted them up in a big pot probably the end of summer. The little one, this is how small they started off. So the little one hasn't grown, or the one in the middle hasn't grown much, but these have really grown. Um, you can see there's like flowers on them. So let's see if they survive the winter. We've had a few frosts. 
so I'm thinking they will. Um, this is kind of like I had other propagations in here, but I've been taking from it, so there's not very much left. There's like a few geraniums that are still hanging on, so I'll probably um, miss this a little bit before I leave. This is some barrage um, seedlings that I took from the field. It just grows so well. It's really good at uh, self-seeding. And I really like the plant, so I decided to start taking, collecting the seeds and also taking the little seedlings and potting them up here, letting them get a little bigger, and then I bring them to our pollinator garden. Um, this is a lavender uh, plant. Now it's a plant, but it was a cutting just two months ago, so that's nice. Um, these are our marigolds that I brought over when it was around October or it was October, around Halloween time. And uh, they're kind of done flowering. I cut all the flowers off and then I fed them to the chickens because marigold flowers and leaves in the stem are all edible by chickens. And they're actually really good for not only um, the chickens' health, but apparently they make the, egg, uh, the, the yolks of eggs like really bright yellow or bright orange. Um, so yeah, and then this was like, I found like a bulb out in the pollinator garden, so like I put unknown bulb, and then I decided to pot it up. I don't know if anything will come from it, but hopefully. Oh, there's Daphne. Right here are some, sorry, I gotta get this in Julia, are some, uh, I believe, cherries, but they've really taken off. When I first started working here, they just like looked like the little like little sprouts and now they actually have like true leaves on them so yeah just been taking care of these too so I am going to water everything in here that needs to be watered not a lot of watering to do and then I'm going to do a little watering of our plants in our picnic pavilion uh, and then I will move on to um, something else. I'm still not sure exactly what I want to do. Uh, check the time. The time will really... Yeah, it's already 2. I'm supposed to be off at 3. Uh, yeah, so we'll probably just water and then I'll plant the little trees. But it's Daphne. Daphne. Come here, Daphne. Let's show Daphne. Come here, Daphne. This is Daphne. She's our little kitten. She's still very rambunctious. Um, but she loves it in the greenhouse. I usually use this for like the propagation and the little seed leaves right here. I'm actually really happy that these snapdragons have sprouted because I was literally gonna give up on give up on them this week because they have been planted there since November 17th and nothing was happening and I was like okay well I just I mean it was kind of just like an experiment because it's like not really the growing season it's winter but um I just wanted to try it just because there's a bunch of the snapdragon like little small heads and I just like wanted to plant them there just because I had nothing else to do with them. And then they sprouted this week. Right the week that I was like, oh, I'm gonna throw them out because nothing's happening. Um they just don't need any water because they're very much soaked. And then I'm gonna soak these with a mist it. Barrage. I'll just put a little bit of water in the tray just so if it wants it, it can get it, but I'm not going to put a lot. Just like a quarter of an inch. Um, then, <laughs> she's so cute. Ah, I love her. I'm sorry. Come on, Daffy. Let's go. 
fruit trees right there <laughs> that I watered. But there's this watering can that I'm gonna fill up and I'm gonna bring it up there and water the plants because they haven't been watered for a few days. We haven't had any rain for a few days, so I just thought I'd water them. So you get hungry. I'm feeling a little like I'm not getting as much done as I wanted to show you guys. So I'll definitely have to do this again sooner rather than later because usually I get a lot more done. But I spent like two hours dealing with the deer situation and then propane. Uh, so I definitely have to do it again. And and also, I'll probably do better because I will be better with the tripod and better with filming. Because I would get the... Oh, I would have gotten the first filming here out of the way. Um, yeah. These are the snapdragons that I had pruned back a few months ago and then I used these seeds to start the tree that's in the greenhouse and they look so great I mean like they were like this plant was almost dead and then pruning it brought it like new life I'm so happy with it like one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11. Like 11 flowering stalks are either appearing or going to appear and it's really great. I love, I used to like not like snapdragons. Or not that I didn't like them, I just wasn't wowed by them, but taking care of this one has made me fall in love with them. And I've bought in, or I bought um, one and I want to start some se uh, snapdragon seeds this following season. So I'm gonna be looking for like interesting colors. You can see it like self-seeded <laughs> all the way around and then even right here. I've just been regularly watering it and it's looking really happy. It's really satisfying to see or I guess gratifying to see like a plant that's like not looking great and then you just give it a little love and then bam it's like a different plant. Amazing. I just remembered when I went up there to water that I need to spray compost tea. And that's probably the last thing I'm gonna do for the day because it takes a long time to get going. And then it's, uh, takes a, I mean, a good amount of time to actually do the spraying. Luckily today, or this week is a neem week. So that means I will not be spraying the pollinator garden or the healing garden. I'll just be doing the fields and the greenhouse. Uh, that's it. Yeah, the fields and the greenhouse. So it won't take that long. It'll take me till three to do it. Um, yeah. So I will see. Ya. This is our compost tea that's brewing. Uh, my coworker made it on Monday. And so since he made it on Monday, we spray it. Wednesday. If he were to make it on Tuesday, then we would spray it on Thursday. Um, it is our compost mixed with water and molasses. Mixed with water and molasses. Um, the molasses is to provide food for the bacteria that are in the compost. And um, this little contraption is what's like pumping it so that it's like being mixed um, to like improve the process. 
processes that are happening with bacteria. I can make like a separate video because I know a little bit about it, but I would also like to learn some more, similar to the compost, and maybe do some sort of um, compost here in my own garden this year. Um, this has neem seed in it, which means that we are spraying it for pests um, in our veggie garden, but we do not want to put it in areas where there are pollinators. So um, we don't spray it in our pollinator garden or on the outskirts, the outer edge of our veggie fields, because that's where we have pollinator um, plants, pollinator friendly plants, like our asters and stuff, and our milkweeds, but our milkweed has already died back. So we don't really need to worry about that. So sorry if I'm saying so a lot. I don't know why I'm saying that. Um this is kind of like this part is just torn in. Check. One gallon I filled it up to. And since it's a name week, um, I'm just going to fill this up once because there's not as much for spraying. So the rest of this will just be poured back into our compost pile. But typically, if it, was, it wasn't a name week, I'd probably be using both. Uh, be using what's left there too. So now I'm going to throw this up with water. So I decided to clean out the compost bucket, compost tea bucket before I spray, just so once I'm done, I'm done <laughs> with it. I need to put my hair up because you wear the thing like a, like a backpack and I don't want any of my hair right here because it would pull it and stuff. This is the first time I am putting this contraption on and started it on it. And it's a little embarrassing because it's heavy and awkward. Um to put on. I I'm only gonna put it on halfway because I still have to put on the um, the battery so it can actually pump. But yeah, I just wanna make sure it's on for real. But yeah, I kind of do like a. I used to be a cheerleader, and we had to do this stunt where our leg. Let's see if I can show you. Our leg. Front leg is bent, our back leg is straight but a little bent, and you start off low, and then you use all your power from your legs to push you up, and then you do your scent. So I have taken that technique and used it here. I just gotta use all my more muscles in my legs and lift it up. And that's how I do it. And then I put the other one on like that. The battery pack goes on the bottom right there and whenever I'm wearing this I feel like I am can't remember his name but the ant from a bug's life when he's carrying all those things on his back I feel like that so I just put the battery in and before I put the backpack on after I put the battery in, I always like to check, check, I always like to check that my sprayer is working and it's working and then I put my backpack on and then I start spraying. I have to do two fields and I like to start at the bottom and work the way up before I move on to the next field. So hopefully you can see me moving around while I spray, but if not, Enjoy this beautiful view, uh, and then I'll come back when I'm done spraying.
Okay, I just finished field one. Now, almost, let's see, uh, almost halfway done with the solution. I'll probably get to half of that. So field one, because field one is a lot smaller than field two. Or sorry, field two is a lot smaller than field one. And there's a lot of borage in field two. So I don't spray that because I have neem in it. And I should mention that when you're spraying the compost tea, you, um, if it didn't have any neem in it, you could spray everything, the leaves, the soil, um, the flowers, it's fine, veggies or whatever. Uh, but since it has neem, I'm being very cautious and not spraying so crazy. So that's why, I don't know if you noticed me, I was just kind of swirling around the area, not the area, but like the actual plant that I was spraying. But when there isn't neem, I go wild and I spray I'm just constantly just spraying and walking backwards and forwards because um, I'm spraying the soil and then I'm spraying the leaves and the flowers and plant. Um, so I'm a little more heavy handed and that's why I go through the whole bucket or almost the whole bucket of compost tea. Um, I'm sorry, there's like so many birds flying around right now and Daphne is investigating the compost. Uh, she'll probably follow me over to the field. but. Uh, yeah, so that's how you would spray it. Um, and then you could also spray like your seedlings and stuff. So it's safe. It's not gonna burn them or anything. Um, this is field two. It's a lot smaller, um, but we are working on expanding it. We'll probably do that in the new year. Um, my two coworkers, uh, they cleared out a lot of the coyote bush and all that it's like that that what's that big pile down there so before that it was like there was a lot of shrubs and coyote bush and a lot of other things growing there so they did a really good job clearing it um so then now we could just bring down material to create the terraces i don't know if you guys could see the blue flowers in the middle um that's the borage so i have to avoid Brain that because the bees are very much attracted to it and yeah I'm just gonna uh, again start from the bottom and work my way up Just need to spray um, the greenhouse, and then I will feed the cats, put Daphne away, and then put the chickens away also, and then I'll leave. It is 3:15, so I'll probably be out of here 3:45. 
and then that's the end of my week. Okay, push through Alicia. We all have kind of dry food. I'm gonna give them some wet food. And Daphne's already there. Let's see if you can see her. Oh, I almost forgot. Gotta put the battery back on the charger. I'm always so out of breath when um, I walk up the hill, but um, what else? I have no idea if you saw how much of a struggle that was, but I did it. I got two in the first time around. So then I got Harriet in, who, she's the easiest. I don't know if you can see, but like, I'm just hurting them, trying to get them all in there. And she's just following me like, hey, where is she going? Oh, I'll follow her. So then I was like able to just like, I could honestly, I never really worried about Harriet because I could always just pick her up and put her in there. And then the last two took a little bit of struggle. I had to get them on their own. But I got all the ladies in there. Uh, hopefully they're not too mad at me because usually they're out here for like maybe an hour or two more. But they needed to go in because I'm leaving and we don't want anything to get them. Um, Daphne is running around in the coop. So I'm gonna put her away and then I'm gonna go home and take a shower and have food and then go to sleep. Um, I'm sorry that I didn't get to show as much as I wanted to show. I'm sorry for the beginning being so negative and sad. Um, but I, it was very therapeutic for me if that makes you feel better. Um, I will definitely try and do something again very soon because uh, I just feel so bad I didn't do as much. Uh, happy winter solstice. Merry Christmas. Um, it's December 20th. Let me see. December twenty first. Sorry. So, happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, um, Happy New Year. If I don't post a video before that, but um, yeah, thank you for watching. I hope this was entertaining. I hope this was um, funny to watch at times, like me trying to put the chickens away. And I hope it wasn't too sad. Um, thanks, guys. Bye.